You go talk to Commander Baron. I've had enough excitement for one day. Hey, <laughs> glad to see you alive. And thanks for sticking your neck out for us. I wanted to tell you that, you know, just in case. Hey, are you all right? We just got the news about the attack. They're getting closer, aren't they? Lay still. Don't move. Thanks for getting us out of there, Sergeant. What's up? I know you're busy, but I found something. <laughs> Something I think you'll like. A tape from back in the day. I want to play it for you, but my boombox is busted. So uh, if you're out there and find one that works, bring it to me, okay? Can't you ask Jennifer or one of the other scavengers for help? I already did, but they couldn't find anything. Just think about it, okay? Jacob. How are the wounded doing? The few that came back, they're doing fine. We patched them up and at this point we're just sitting and waiting. What's in your mind? Ever since you asked me about Peter, I can't stop <coughs> thinking about him. Like a teenage girl. <laughs> That's your fault, young man. Have you tried looking for him? I've looked for him for a while. I went to the place where we said we'd meet if we ever got separated. But he wasn't there. Maybe it's stupid. Maybe I should stop thinking about him. He's... he's probably dead by now. God knows he can't take care of himself. Do you want to find him? Sometimes I think I should drop everything and go. I would get an earful from Baron, but she's nothing I can't handle. Anyway... What I didn't tell you before is that during Judgment Day, I lost a child. Our child. I don't know if it would have happened anyway, but I like to blame the machines for that. I think that Peter felt with Taylor we were given a second chance. God, he's still out there waiting for me, isn't he? Probably sitting in his rocking chair back in our house in Hollywood Hills. Oh, where the hell are you, Peter? Rivers, you want to explain to me what the hell happened? We lost downtown. I know that much. But how's that possible? What happened to our defense systems? Alvin says one of our soldiers came with an order directly from you to reset the target settings for non-lethals. He said what? Ah, uh, all right, this is what I want you to do. Find whoever is responsible for sending that order. All the messengers have GPS tracking, so we're keeping tabs on their location. Find them and bring them to me. Understood. And Rivers, despite what I might say about our resident egghead, I truly have a hard time believing that my men are incompetent. So expect the unexpected. And you know what I mean by that. Do you think the Infiltrator's back? We won't be sure until you find those messengers and confirm my suspicion. Now that you mention it... What? One of our soldiers said that it looked as if one of our guys led Skynet's attack. That only supports my case. As soon as you know what's going on, radio me. Who's Perry? You mentioned him before. The best soldier I ever fought beside. He was the one who brought me into the Resistance. <laughs> it's actually a funny story. Years ago, when I was just a kid, I saw a Skynet drone attacking some guy. Without thinking, I grabbed a rock and jumped on it. The guy was screaming the whole time while I beat the metal to the ground. Only when I was done did I realize he was trying to stop me. You killed a drone with a rock? Uh, I was young and stupid. Thank God the drone wasn't really armed, otherwise I wouldn't be here to tell you the story. He was a resistance scientist, and that drone was one of his projects. So you can imagine he wasn't too happy when I smashed it to pieces. But he wasn't alone. There was this huge guy with a rifle on his shoulder, almost choking with laughter. They sure made his day. That huge guy? 
Was that Perry? Yes, it was. Commander Perry was in charge of this division before me. That scientist later told me that was the first time he ever heard Perry laugh. Somehow, Perry and I connected. He taught me how to channel my anger and get it under control. He introduced me to Connor, and that's how I got to the 132nd. Whatever happened to the scientist? Huh. He was always doing his experiments, trying to outsmart Skynet. One day he fucked up, and because of that he's no longer with us. I'd never thought I'd be reminiscing about the day I met them. This may come as a surprise to you, but it was the first metal I ever destroyed. <laughs> Sounds like you were late in joining the Destroy Skynet campaign. Before that it was people, not machines. But that's a different story. You want me to break radio silence? They have a head start on us. At this point, we can't afford to lose any time. Uh, did, did you talk to her? I is she mad at me? If I follow her orders, then I'm a bad guy. If I don't follow her orders, then I'm a lousy, incompetent egghead without a spine. There's no winning with her. Do you need anything? Can I see your hardware? I wasn't expecting to find you here. You always seem to be out these days. Yeah, that's true. Lately, I've been making extra runs to stock up on resources. <clears throat> the truth is, I was even thinking about leaving. But right now, I'm just waiting for my team to head back to downtown to look for other survivors. Let's hope there still are some. I see that Patrick's doing better. He is. He's a fighter. Certainly has more courage than I do. Why did you want to leave? In the face of what's going on now, it will sound stupid, but... It just got to be a bit much, you know? With Patrick Hurd, I started to wonder if I'm even doing him any good by sticking around. I've been trying to protect him all this time, but I couldn't. I've proven that much already. First in Pasadena, then at our hideout. I was thinking that maybe he'd be safer here at the shelter. But don't worry. I changed my mind since. Is there something on your mind? Actually, I have a secret to tell you. You have a fan. Patrick really looks up to you. It's good for him to have a role model. And I don't think he could have chosen better. I don't think I'd make for a good role model. <laughs> I never knew Jacob Rivers could be so coy. Be proud. You're a hero. The Resistance owes you a lot. And so do I. If you hadn't found us back in Pasadena, I don't know what would have happened. Well, actually I do. Exactly what the others said would happen. People were talking about the Annihilation Line months before it came. <clears throat> My father, of course, tried to turn it all into a joke. But what did you think? <clears throat> I didn't know what to think. Travelers would bring all sorts of gossip with them. But this kept coming back. When Patrick asked me if I was scared, I lied and said that I wasn't. You could feel the mood change at the house. The community my father tried to build started falling apart. Fewer and fewer people were coming by. And if they did, they weren't always friendly. We started to notice things going missing. Little things at first. People got nervous. And with time, it even got to my father. Well, for one thing, he stopped making jokes. It had never been as quiet at the house as it had been back then. After a while, my father changed the sign from welcome to beware. He put a lock on the door and started carrying a shotgun. I didn't even know he owned a gun. He always said he didn't believe in them. I 
wanted us to leave our house and run, but he didn't want to listen. Said it was the only place he could keep us safe. <coughs> Thanks for letting me spill my guts like that. 